Hello and welcome to this demo on the JD Edwards Internet of Things Orchestrator. My name is Gary DeWill. I am an applications consultant with Oracle Global Sales Engineering. The IoT Orchestrator connects the physical world to the virtual world. On the left hand side of this E1 page we see four sensors that we will use to update the applications on the right hand side. The IoT Orchestrator uses the following components to transform raw data into data that can be used by Enterprise One. Whitelists are initial rudimentary pass and fail checks for added security, while rules are a set of conditions to validate against. Cross-references link the external devices with JDE data such as items or asset numbers. Lastly, service requests are the actual service calls to the AIS server to make the updates. Let's take a look at our first use case where we insert GPS coordinates in the Equipment Master. If a user were to update the equipment location, he or she would need to right click in the Equipment Master to Locations, then Address Book, then Inquiry, then another right click to Details. The Equipment Master Location Details form contains the coordinates fields. We have an active GPS sensor running that updates these coordinates fields every 30 seconds. So when we select a particular piece of equipment, the sensor updates the equipment master where we included a CAFE 1 frame to display the location on a map. The user can use the equipment mobile app to check the equipment at any point in time. In this example, we are looking at the Oracle campus in Denver, Colorado. As for the GPS sensor, it is one of four sensors attached to a microcontroller that we can see here. Notice that this microcontroller is used for demo purposes only. In the real world, your assets would utilize natively installed sensors and that a microcontroller of this type will not be required. You can use the IoT Orchestrator to track any type of equipment. A second use case would be updating a meter reading. Let's assume that we have an industrial pump that requires some maintenance work every thousand hours. Our current meter reading shows that the pump has been running for 243 hours and 40 minutes. You can see on this live webcam here that when I press the button we will see a blue light go on in the background. We translated seconds into minutes. So when I let go the button, an orchestration will be invoked and the form will be updated. Notice that the quantity changes from 243.40 to 243.45. We can also include a CAFE 1 page to show the increments over time. And here too, we can leverage the mobile apps to get a real-time update. For the third use case, we'll be using a BLE beacon, or a Bluetooth Low Energy Beacon. Even though there are countless use cases for BLE in the real world, for our demo, we will turn on the device and once we turn it off again, we will see a time entry update. Geofencing is a technology that uses the global positioning system or radio frequency identification to define geographical boundaries. So it is a virtual barrier. Let's use a shop floor with different work centers as an example. Each work center may charge different hourly rates. By placing beacons around the facility, we would know how long a product or a person is in a certain area. And as a result, we can charge accurate time to that work center. So when we enter the time entry application, we can see that the new line was added and that the beacon has been turned on for a total of 45 seconds. Our last demo case is a temperature sensor, which will trigger a condition-based maintenance alert once the temperature exceeds a certain temperature. So for this, I will bring up the webcam again. The green blinking light means that our current temperature is within range. But as soon as I place my finger on the temperature sensor, the green light will stop and the red light will start blinking. 
We are storing the temperature readings in the supplemental data table, F00092. We can include this table in any form by using CAFE1. Next we will check the CBM workbench where we can see that the line was inserted for the same 86.3 Fahrenheit. So as we can see here, a new service order was created based on a model work order. And just as with the previous cases, we can check our mobile apps for real-time updates. Lastly, we can check our workflow that was submitted. Thank you for watching this demo on the JD Edwards IoT Orchestrator.